now we can get started. Hey there guys, Crossflex here, welcoming you back to Let's Play Metroid Zero Mission. In the last episode, we defeated our arch nemesis Ridley, and in today's episode, it's time to take the fight to Mother Brain herself. We're finally fully equipped, and it's time to put her in her place and put peace back on not only planet Zebus, but for the rest of the galaxy. So, it's a little bit of backtracking, as the way that we need to go is back into Brinstar. Thanks to the one map. Let me see. Am I able to change areas? Okay. Ridley. Criteria. Friendstar. Okay, here we go. So remember in the top left corner of the screen, there are those two statues that looked like Kraid and Ridley? Well, now that both of them have been defeated, we have access to the area beyond those statues. So that's where we're heading. So I'm going to speed up real quick as I make my way back there. guys, I'm going to cut the slowdown a little early here because there's actually a secret that requires us to be in this very area in order for us to get. It's actually a super missile upgrade. And so it's going to be a little hard to explain, but I'll try and do it on the fly. Basically what you're going to want to do is head all the way to the left here as far as you can. And then charge your speed booster by running as far to the right. You gotta make sure to stop yourself by pressing down just before you touch that right wall like I just did. Otherwise you won't uh, build up your charging time. So it's a little bit of tricky timing. So then what you're gonna wanna do is kinda do what I just did there. Stop yourself from going left all the way as far as you can. And then do something very similar here. And okay, wow, first try. Alright, to explain it a little bit better, what you need to do is running across ramps will uh, conserve your charge. So basically, if you shine spark to a ramp, you'll uh, come out of your shine spark boost and continue running with your speed booster. So you're going to have to make use of that trick in order to conserve your charge as best as you can. And then hold left while you're shooting as a ball so that you can reach that one area that I kind of showed off there. So it's kind of hard to explain but that's kind of the best way I can do it. Uh, I figure the best way of figuring it out is through trial and error and just kind of watching how I did it. So while I was explaining that one secret, uh, I kind of showed off two other secrets that you can get on your way back through Brinstar. But I'm just kind of cleaning out the rest of the secrets that are to be had here before we make our final trek into the region of Turian. But there's only one other secret left that we can get, and it's technically a secret that I missed near the very start of the Let's Play. Uh, so you guys remember that uh, sack room with the uh, creatures that I like to call bot flies? Yeah, it's actually in that room. It was kind of hidden behind some walls. So I just wasn't nosy enough for it, I guess. Anyways, or it should be there in just a second. Okay, maybe a few seconds. I forgot there's a couple corridors that have these flies in them. One more room. Okay, here we go. It's going to be in the top left corner of the screen here. So normally we came through to the right here. What you're going to want to do is walk across here and we get some missiles. It's kind of interesting. You can actually screw attack to destroy that sack without having to use your missiles. Anyways, now that all the secrets have finally been had in Brinstar here, at least to the best of our abilities at this point, I say we head straight on to our next destination. So that's going to be in the top left corner of the leftmost shaft. I'm not going to speed up just because it's only going to take a few seconds to get there from here. So, kind of weird to think that our journey's pretty much over already. 
about to take the fight to Mother Brain herself. It feels like we just kind of started. But I guess Metroid's not that long of a game if you know exactly what you're doing. So, it's kind of actually cool reminiscing about all these old areas. Uh, it seemed so difficult at the time, but obviously now with all the gear at our disposal, it's kind of a breeze. Especially with that screw attack. Anyways, here we are. All it takes is a couple seconds for these doors to charge. Not exactly sure what kind of technology this is, like why they release when Ridley and Crate are dead. You would think that they would stay closed when their bosses have been defeated, because if something's able to defeat Crate and Ridley, you don't want it coming down into your base. But anyways, take the elevator down. Very creepy. So obviously that's a cutscene that Samus herself isn't seeing. It's mainly just there for us, the audience. So it seems the space pirates kind of let these Metroids get out of hand. Anyways, so we're going to see a few dead corpses along the way. And these uh, circle things, oh my goodness, I can't believe I forgot to do my research on what they're called beforehand. But they're really annoying. They're going to make it to where you're going to have to stay on the move pretty much at all times if you don't want to get hit. But this room introduces the namesake of the game, the Metroids. For those of you who uh, are fancy on your Metroid lore, then you know that the Metroid's only weakness is cold. So thankfully we have the Ice Beam at our disposal. So what you're going to want to do is freeze it with your uh, Ice Beam and then unload it with either one Super Missile or five regular missiles. Now the Metroids do not stay frozen for very long as you can see. So you're going to want to be very quick and decisive when you're putting them to the test. Especially with these uh, poop things coming to attack you the whole time. Alright, freeze that, unload, okay good. Also I recommend taking this area very slowly so that you can take one Metroid out at a time. Because the last thing you want is multiple Metroids coming at your throat all at once. Because then you're really going to have to worry about your placement. If you do accidentally get hit by a Metroid, the only way to release it is by going into Morph Ball and laying a bomb. But you're going to want to do so as quickly as you can because they will drain your health incredibly quickly. Like it's almost ridiculous how fast they can bring you down. So I kind of didn't really listen to my own advice there because I let two Metroids come at me at once. But thankfully I did a little bit of practice beforehand so I knew exactly where they would be so I'd be ready. Alright, so yeah, these hoops are definitely getting annoying here. Let's see, there's one more Metroid that's going to pop up here. I'm have to crouch to get that one. Refreeze it. And, okay, there we go. So yeah, if you just notice how I'm doing it, kind of taking it as slow as I possibly can then you'll notice that it's not too bad. But yeah, if you're definitely not prepared for the Metroids, then it can definitely be troublesome. But if I'm not mistaken, this is the last save room before the final confrontation. So, I would definitely make use of it. Obviously, since I'm recording and I don't want to save over any footage if I accidentally uh, die for whatever reason, or my recording gets screwed up, so I'm not going to save. But, there's no reason why you guys shouldn't. Right. This room's a little bit easier because it's uh, fairly easy to take the Metroids out one at a time since they can't really all swarm you at once, even if they do spawn all at once like this, as you can see here. Let's see. I recommend using missiles over super missiles just because super missiles are way more valuable and you probably have way more missile expansions than super missile expansions. So, one more Metroid in this room here and we're free to progress. Let's see. Right, this room at first appears to be empty, but this gray door here seems to imply that we haven't yet met the condition of the room. So what you're going to want to do is throw a bomb. Okay, freeze that. Okay, this room is definitely going to be a little trouble here. But I just kind of stayed moving around to trick the Metroids into an area that they couldn't quite reach me. To 
make disposing of them a little bit easier and a little bit more fair by forcing it to be a one-on-one -on -one fight. But yeah, each level of this room here will have four Metroids, I believe. But there's still one more layer to go through. Alright, not too bad. Maybe this bottom layer only has two. Yeah, it does only have two. So it's kind of a cakewalk after you just came off from that top layer here. And then we should be done. Okay, I was right. Okay, and now I was wrong. This is the final save room before the final confrontation. So, without further ado, let's finish storming our mission. We came here for one mission and one mission only, so let's put it to good use. So here it seems there's some weird barrier things protecting Mother Brain. The only way you can destroy them is with missiles. And they will regenerate, so you're going to want to be quick with dispatching of these shields. All the while, you're going to have to stay as mobile as you possibly can, since these cannon things will constantly keep hounding you, as well as the boot enemy things, whatever they're called. Ringas, I think? I think that just came to me. If I'm right about that, then that's lucky. But alright, there's the ugly mug herself. Metroid, or not Metroid, Mother Brain. So, just use a couple super missiles to bust open that cranium and plow her full of missiles. So basically, she'll fight very similar to those boss door things that we saw earlier, just before the fights with Ridley and Kraid. She'll fire a beam and then be exposed for just a second. So, you're going to have to time your jumps well to avoid taking as much damage as you can. You're also going to have to crouch so that you can hit her eye. Let's see. Personally, since I have so many, so many energy tanks, I'm probably just going to take as many hits as I can, hoping that I can deal more damage to her than she can deal to me. But we'll see how that strategy pays off for me. So far, not so good. I'm going to take a short break here just to kind of catch a breather. Alright, she's going to keep looking at me. But alright, actually I managed to do that fairly easily. But self-destruct mechanism? Oh no, it's only like what Metroid's most known for. So, with Mother Brain's defeat, she decided to take us out with her. With her plans defeated, she knew that the only other way that she can have her revenge is by taking care of us. So the whole base here in Torian's gonna go kablooey. And we're gonna have to make our sit quick since these blocks are destructible if you stand on them for too long. So, two minutes is actually a decent amount of time to get through here, even if you are platforming fairly poorly like I am right now. But, it's definitely a little bit challenging for a first-time player, since you're probably caught off guard by that timer. Now, we're going to take the elevator all the way up to Criteria, and hopefully we can blast our way through the rest of the area. Alright, up ledge, up ledge, run away. Come on, hurry up. We're almost there. So this place here is actually a bit of a dead end, so you're going to want to keep heading off to the right. And you're just going to want to keep heading to the right so that you can build up your speed booster. And we'll make it into our ship. Alright, Mother Brain couldn't take us down. And we're getting out of here alive. Well, looks like mission complete. Still a shame. It must be really sad for Samus since she grew up on Zebus. But with our work done, there's no need for our power suit. Wait, what's going on? Space pirate ships. It's a dogfight in space. So it seems the space pirates weren't quite finished. We hit their major base, but they still have a fleet outside in orbit. I imagine a long battle pursued, but. Eventually, there were just too many space pirates, and one of them shot us down. Hope we survived. Well, looks like we survived, but our ship's definitely in disrepair, and our power suit's offline. So we're gonna have to do this the hard way. The timing of my escape couldn't have been worse. I was attacked by space pirates and left nearly defenseless, stripped of my power suit. All I had for protection was my rather useless emergency pistol. Infiltrating the space pirate mothership so armed may have been foolish, but I had no choice. Well guys, 
Seemed hopeful at first, but our mission's not quite complete. So, hope you'll join me in the next episode as we find out the next saga of this game. Hope you all have a blessed day, and I'll see you then.